Okay, so in this video, we're going to go ahead and solve this equation. And the equation is 1 over t is equal to the square root of t. So if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're going to have to be able to handle an equation like this. So my question to you is, do you have the current algebra skills to solve an equation like this? So if your answer is yes, well then pause the video, uh, work on this problem, put your answer into the comment section, and we'll uh, compare notes in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my uh, math help program in the description of this video. But I've been teaching math for decades, and I really like to think of myself as uh, more like explaining math versus teaching math. Okay, I really try to break things down, explain things in super clear and understandable ways so anyone and everyone can be successful in math. And you can be successful in math. What you need is the right instruction. And I think I have that for you. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I could definitely help you out. Now, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam. I could definitely help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you absolutely must check out my homeschool uh, math courses. We were just uh, recently voted number one for middle and um, high school mathematics by a major homeschool publication. So pretty excited about that. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into it. We got 1 over t is equal to the square root of t. Now, on the surface, this doesn't seem to be too difficult, right? Doesn't, there's not too many moving parts here. But actually, this is a pretty interesting equation. So let's get right to it and uh, talk about a few uh, major steps that we need to take. So... A couple different ways you could approach this problem. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and approach it in this manner. So if you did this in a slightly different way, as long as you got the um, same answer as uh, that I got at the end, then that's perfectly fine. But what I'm gonna do is I'm looking at this as one fraction, and then I can write this or I can think of this expression over here as a fraction as well. Anytime you want to think of something as a fraction, let's say like the number five, and I want to think of that as a fraction, just put it over one. Okay, so 5 over 1, there's my fraction. Or maybe the variable a, if I want to think of that as a fraction, just put that over 1, a over 1. So if I want to think of this as a fraction, I'm just going to put this over 1. So when I do that, I basically have one fraction equal to another fraction. And this is what we call a proportion uh, in mathematics. It's very um, nice when we have proportions because we can just simply just uh, use the cross product. We just cross multiply like this to uh, simplify this. So we got 1 times 1, of course, is 1, and then t times t, uh, t times the square root of t. So really what we have here is 1 is equal to t times the square root of t. So let's talk about this next part right here. Okay, So we have this radical the square root symbol. One of the things you need to know is that we can express this uh, as a rational exponent. If you didn't know that uh, the square root, we can also express as one half, the exponent one half. And this goes into a further subject called rational exponents. But basically, the square root of t, let me write this over here, is equal to t to the one half power. Okay, so if you didn't know that, now you know. So basically what we have is 1 is equal to t. Okay, now what power of t is this right here? Well, this is really t to the first times t to the 1 half. Okay, so now we have t to the first times t to the 1 half. Now, when you look at this, we have to notice that the bases are the same. Okay, so remember when you're studying your uh, rules for powers and exponents. If I have a to the m times a to the n, I'm multiplying two powers with the same base. Okay, like in this case, uh, the rule is we add the exponent. So this is a to the m plus n. So here I have the same bases. I'm multiplying. So I'm going to add the exponents. So 1 plus 1 half is going to be 3 halves. Okay. So again, you know, a pretty interesting uh, problem right off the bat 
we're changing our uh, square root to a rational exponent, okay? That's the only way to really kind of handle this uh, particular problem. So now we have to figure out what we're gonna do here. We have one is equal to t to the three halves power, okay? So how do we solve this equation? Well, this is kind of part two, and uh, part two of this exercise. Let's go ahead and move down. All right, so here we uh, have t to the three halves power is equal to one. So I want to solve for t, or t to the first. Okay, that's my objective. I want to get, not. To, I have t to the three halves. I want uh, t to the first power. So the best way to handle that situation is we have t to the three halves power. So to make this into t to the first, I can raise this side. I could take this power to two thirds because a power to a power, like a to the m, times n, we multiply this outside power to this, or this outside exponent to this inside uh, exponent. So this is a to the m times n. So in this case, I have 3 halves times 2 thirds, which of course is going to be 1. So if I take uh, 3 halves to the 2 thirds power, I'll end up with t to the first, or t, and that's what I want on that left-hand side. But if I raise that uh, left-hand side uh, by the 2 thirds power, I need to raise the right-hand side by 2 thirds power as well, okay? So then we're going to end up with t to the first, okay, or just t, uh, is equal to 1 to the 2 thirds power. Okay, so again, you know, a lot of interesting things going on here. Now we got to figure out what 1, or sorry, uh, t is equal to 1 to the 2 thirds power. What does this mean? Well, I can put this back into radical form and without getting too deep into how to uh, work with radicals and rational exponents, this means the cube root of one uh, squared. Okay, this is what this means right here. So one to the two thirds is equal to the cube root of one squared and one squared, a positive one squared is of course one. So the cube root of a positive one is just one. So T is equal to one. All right, but uh, we're not quite done here yet because really technically we could have extraneous roots here because way back in the beginning of this problem, I could have cleared the, the fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by t, okay? So when you multiply both sides of the equation by a variable, you can introduce extraneous roots. So what we want to do is check our work, okay? So let's plug this t is equal to one into the original equation and see what we come up with. All right, so we got one over t. If t is equal to one, we're gonna replace this t with one, and that's what I have right here. So I have one over one, and then we're gonna replace this t with one. So we have one over one, is that equal to the square root of one? And when you're checking for extraneous roots, you're always checking with the principal square root, i.e. the positive version of that square root. So the square root of one, if, uh, the square root of a positive one is one, and one divided by one is one. So one is equal to one. That is a true statement. Therefore, t uh, equal to one is a good solution for this equation. Okay, so uh, maybe this problem is a little deceiving. You know, from the outset, it doesn't look like there's too much work, but in fact, you had to know quite a bit of algebra in order to solve this problem. But if you got this all right, then I must go ahead and give you a nice happy face. Matter of fact, we'll, um, give you a 1984 flat top haircut and an A plus and a 100% just because that was pretty cool. You know, just like that haircut way back in the day, that was pretty cool if you were able to solve this problem. Okay, I don't use that word lightly, but you know, you definitely have some algebra skills if you're able to understand all the little moving parts in this problem to include uh, the uh, necessity to check for extraneous roots, okay? So if you got all this right and you understood all of this, then you are def definitely doing very well in algebra. So keep it up, okay? The one thing uh, that I would encourage all of you out there is don't get comfortable with your skills. Just because you do one problem doesn't necessarily can, uh, mean that you can do more challenging problems. So continue to practice and challenge yourself with more and more challenging problems. Okay, that's how you're going to really increase your algebra skills. But hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. 
and uh, subscribe to my channel to help me out. I've been on YouTube for um, 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So uh, if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.